Welcome to the seventh domain of the Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers. And this is about you. You know, the past domains talked about the, you know, the learning environment, the diverse learners, you know, curriculum, assessment, pedagogy, and content. But this has something to do with you. That's why for the board exam, this has to be very, very important. This is critical. And this is the seventh domain known as personal growth and professional development. As you may know, growth has something to do with quantitative. You know, growth is uh, something measurable. But, you know, when you say development, this is qualitative. This is what you can actually demonstrate as skills. It's your qualities that matter. Your salary can be growth. Your promotion is related to growth. Your savings, your financial literacy will drive you to growth. That's why it's called personal growth because it's you growing. But professionally, don't forget to develop. Development is qualitative. It has something to do with the quality of teacher, uh, what kind of quality teacher you are, all right? Your journey as a teacher begins when you become what you call the beginning teacher. Okay, a beginning teacher is someone who has the qualifications. You passed the board, you studied uh, education for four years, or you're, you took other, another course, you took 18 years, and the fact is you passed the board. That's why you have the required skills, knowledge, and values to become a teacher. You have uh, the capability, you have the qualification, you have the requisites as far as becoming a teacher is concerned because you have the qualification, all right? You have the vital skills, but you know, you cannot stay there forever. You have to develop. You can be and you should be a proficient teacher. Okay. A proficient teacher, therefore, has the independence. That's the magic word. You become independent. You know, when you're a beginning teacher, you will seek advice. You know, you'll, you'll run to your master teacher. You'll run to your senior teacher. But when you're a proficient teacher, you become independent. Not because you don't need them. Not because you don't collaborate with them. But because you are more skilled already in planning, in, you know, implementing, and even in, um, uh, uh, in uh, monitoring, in managing, and even evaluating educational programs. So that's the beauty of becoming a proficient teacher. But you don't stop there. You should endeavor to become an, a highly proficient teacher. Okay, by becoming a highly proficient teacher, you know, you become the mentor to many. You become a collaborator uh, for, for the, the teams that are developed in your schools. And you have the in-depth and sophisticated capability, not only as a teacher in the classroom, but a teacher in the school and a teacher in the community. So that's what you demonstrate when you become highly proficient teacher. And of course, you reach up the ladder and you become the distinguished teacher. Okay, and the distinguished teacher now is someone who is more global in perspective. But you know, you don't stop there even as you reach the distinguished teacher level. You become a lifelong learner. Uh, but because as a lifelong learner, even here you become a lifelong learner and you get that far, you create a lifelong impact already to not only to your students, but to your co-teachers, uh, to, uh, to the administrators, even to the community. You speak the language of quality. You speak the language of excellence. You become more global. And you know what? When you become a distinguished teacher, you endeavor even more to become engaged in professional adjustment. So this is your journey. Now, where are you? You're currently not yet there. But the moment you pass the board, you will become the beginning teacher. Okay, the proficient teacher who is independent already, who is, uh, who is uh, uh, skilled already in many areas of educational planning, not only in the classroom, but for the entire school. A highly proficient is the mentor, you know, it's the mentor, it's the collaborator, someone who is, has in-depth information or knowledge about becoming a teacher, someone who is a little more sophisticated. And when you become, you know, a leader, an educational leader, speaking global, speaking quality, speaking excellence, then you become the distinguished teacher. You will not be able to go up the ladder unless you are familiar with the seventh domain. And the seventh domain, as, as I said earlier, has something to do with personal growth <clears throat> and professional development. 
Okay, this is what we will talk about now. <clears throat> All right, let's talk about personal growth. What does it mean? It means that the teacher actually value. There is something you value if you have this. You value, all right, you value personal growth and professional development. That's what you value. But this is where the teacher will have to embrace, whether you like it or not, the requirement for CPD, continuing professional development. Well, this looks like simply, uh, you know, an, an, uh, you know, an engagement to comply with Republic Act 10912. Okay, uh, the, this Republic Act 10, 10912, you know, it strengthened the continuing professional development not only for teachers but all regulated professionals. And this has something to do also with uh, the creation of the uh, uh, CPD councils among all professions. And simply put, and by the way, this is in 2016. As early as 2016, we all have this already. And the mandate of this is for all, for professionals, for baccalaureate graduate professionals to have 15 units per year. Or since we are renewing the license every three years, remember the license is just a privilege, that's why it's renewed, uh, you are required to have 45 units uh, per renewal, which is actually three years. Okay, now if you have excess, that's fine. All right, if you have excess, that, that's fine. Um, graduate studies are included here, seminars, accredited seminars, etc. Now, I'd like to dig deep a little more on the concepts, concept of the CPD. Don't forget that there is such a thing as ASEAN Economic Integration. Okay, the ASEAN Economic Cooperation. Don't miss that. The 10 countries, okay, coming together. All right. Uh, not only for economic, but also for human resource. And that's why there is such a thing as AQ. RF. What is the AQRF? The ASEAN Qualification Reference Framework. Okay, this is the qualification reference. That's the major, that's the, the thing there. Qualification um, reference. Okay, it's a framework in the ASEAN. And that's why in the Philippines, we have such a thing as Philippine Qualification Framework. The Philippine Qualification Framework puts it in several levels. You have to attend reviews to understand more about this. But the thing is, uh, the qualifications that you're earning in the Philippines is something that is recognized in the ASEAN because we have the mutual recognition arrangements, the ASEAN, okay, the ASEAN MRA, mutual recognition arrangements, where your qualifications here are recognized elsewhere in the ASEAN. In the same way that the qualifications of our uh, neighbors in the ASEAN are also recognized here in the Philippines, okay? When you speak of CPD, okay, when we speak of CPD, go down there, the CPD refers to post-baccalaureate, okay? Post-baccalaureate specializations, okay? For example, uh, you want to specialize. That's why you when graduate studies are included here. It, it's something to do also with interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary okay uh, multidisciplinary uh, fields for example you want to attend first aid programs of nurses that's fine that's acceptable because that's part of CPD it's a, you know it's a multidisciplinary now if you are a math major and you want to learn english from the from the you know english majors that's okay that's uh, you know that's within the the profession intradisciplinary. But if you want to cross border in other disciplines, that's also okay. And the purpose of this, of course, is uh, the assimilation. That's the thing. It's an assimilation. That's why it is wrong that you are renewing this month. You will get all the units that you need this month. That's wrong because it's a process of assimilation so that you can inculcate. You can put it in the practice. You can put it in research or simply put, you can Put it because you are, uh, you, you can uh, adopt it and assimilate it because you are a lifelong learner. Okay, later on, we'll talk about the lifelong, uh, the, the lifelong learner. Therefore, the CPD is not only about renewing the license. The CPD has something to do with what is very important, which is your knowledge, your skills, and your 
values, the knowledge, skills, and values. And this has to be demonstrated in four areas. I hope this can still be seen. The four areas. First is cognitive. Cognitive. Okay, it's your understanding. Na iintindihan mo pa ba ang profession mo habang nagbabago siya? Functional. Okay, functional. Yung naintindihan mo ba na gagamit mo pa? That's the question. Another one is ethical. Okay, ethical. Ikaw ba ay meron pang moral righteousness as a professional? And of course, last is personal. Okay, napakinabangan mo ba ito bilang tao? That's the essence of the CPD. Therefore, I want to deepen that CPD is not only about compliance of the 15 units per year or the 45 units every renewal, but the CPD is you developing the specialty deeper and uh, wider. Uh, it's interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary. You want to attend financial literacy courses, that's okay. That's part of it. Because you want the, the context of the law, which is RA 10912, is so that you can assimilate to it for the improvement of your practice, for your engagement in self-directed research, and uh, your role as a lifelong learner. So this is where uh, the CPD will come in. And you know, when you speak of development and uh, you know and uh, growth, we're talking about the magic word learning. Okay, the thing there is, are you still learning? Okay, and learning can come in three different forms. Uh, you can come in, this can come to you in formal, non-formal, or informal. Okay, you, the formal is easy. Formal is when you go to school, there is a structured curriculum, or you go to a national agency like NAYAP, there is a curriculum that they follow, you engage in learning, that's formal learning. The graduate studies are formal learning. When you speak of the non-formal, these are the more flexible. Non-formal are the alternatives in addition to formal. You know, these are trainings, you know, these are seminars, workshops. Okay, but when you speak of informal, hindi siya formal, it is what you learn in life. Okay, you learn it in life. But is it something, can you just go to PRC and say, hi, I had a, an informal learning on uh, gardening. Of course, they will believe that you learned it in life because you became a plantito during the pandemic. But the thing is, uh, after you engage in the informal learning, you have to make sure that there is recognition. Okay, recognition. And such that that, that, should, that will be recognized. How will that be recognized? There is validation. Eva validate. And that validation is through assessment. And that's why you are assessed. And because of that, you will be given accreditation. Okay. And what do you get if you went through, uh, for example, an informal learning, like you, you uh, self-studied on, uh, because you went to the YouTube university, you self-studied on agriculture, and then you go to PRC that you have learned it. Okay, maybe you can go to TESDA, and TESDA will subject you to validation of your, of your competency and will give you accreditation for what you have learned because at the end of the day, these things you engage in, these things you engage in here leads you to what you call qualification. That's the magic word. Okay, because you know, the thing about uh, CPD is that it should improve, it should increase your qualification. It's not a waste of time because you become more qualified after you engage in it. Okay, let me recap this part because I will still fill up this part, this side of the wall. Okay, it goes like this. When you speak of personal growth and professional development, ang ibig sabihin nito, you value. Binibigyan pahalaga mo ang personal growth and professional development. In the more concrete term, ito yung CPD, Continuing Professional Development, na nanggaling sa isang batas, 10 na nag-utos sa PRC since 2016, na dapat bago ka makarenew ng license, kailangan mo ng 45 units kasi kailangan mo ng 15 units per year. So kung umaaten ka ng seminar three times in one year at binigyan ka ng 5 units per seminar, meron ka ng 15 units. Pero yun lang ba ang pinanggagalingan ng CPD? The answer is no. Pero palalinin pa natin ang usapan. 
Meron kasing tinatawag na ASEAN Economic Cooperation. At dahil dyan, nagkaroon ng ASEAN Qualification Reference Framework na kung saan ang qualification ng Filipino professionals ay nire-recognize, mutual recognition, kasi may agreement ang ASEAN na may mutual recognition na yung ating qualifications na naaayon sa ating Philippine Qualification Framework ay nire-recognize din as qualification sa ibang bansa sa ASEAN. At kasabay niyan, yung mga qualifications ng mga kapitbahay nating ASEAN nations tatanggapin din dito sa Pilipinas. Okay. At kagaya nun, sabi ko, therefore, kailangan nating maging mag-specialize. Kaya mag-a-engage tayo sa mga post-baccalaureate specialization uh, training, education, okay, na pwedeng interdisciplinary within, I mean, across the discipline, pwedeng multidisciplinary. By multidisciplinary, pwedeng umaten ka ng isang seminar sa first aid, may nakita ka dong engineer, may nakita ka dong nurse, may nakita ka dong doktor, may nakita ka dong teacher. Yun ang multidisciplinary kasi tanggap yon. At ang konteksto ng CPD ay i-assimilate mo, iipunin mo ang learning na yon. Iipunin mo ang learning na yon para magamit mo sa improvement ng practice mo, magamit mo sa research kung interesado ka sa research, at mapatutuhanan niya na ikaw ay isang lifelong learner. Ang learning can happen informal. Pumunta ka sa school, may curriculum, may structure, formal. Okay, ah, kung hindi masyadong ganun ka-formal, yun yung informal. Pero ang informal is alternative. It's addition to. It's like seminar, workshop, trainings, mga ganon. Okay, o kaya mga modular learning, etc. These are non-formal. Bakit siya non-formal? Formal siya pero hindi masyado. Pag sinabi mong informal, hindi talaga siya formal. Okay, pinag-aralan mo, tinuruan ka ng nanay mo kung paano magluto, hindi ka pwedeng pumunta sa test at sasabihin mong tinuruan ka ng nanay mo para magluto at mas magaling ka na sa nanay mo. That, won't, that wouldn't work. So what you have to do there is to make sure that what you learn is recognized. At para ma-recognize yun, kailangan ma-validate. At para ma-validate yun, i-assess ka. At pag na-assess yun at napatunayang meron kang capability, ma-accredit yung iyong informal learning. Mabibigyan ka ngayon ng qualification. At kaya yung mga NC2, NC3, NC4, those are certifications that, that prove your qualification. Alright, so that's the part right here. I will now continue with, with something more than just being required to achieve or to, to renew your license. I'll talk about the teacher valuing. Okay, may binavalue ang teacher dito. Personal. Okay, binavalue niya ang personal. Oh, personal and professional. There's a magic word here. Reflection. Okay, this is a big word in education. Personal and professional reflection. Pag sinabi mong reflection, reflective learning, this is reflection in at reflection on action. Okay. In, in the, the context of education, you know, you reflect while you are teaching or you can reflect after teaching and such reflection leads to improvement. Yun ang gusto nating pag-usapan. At dahil marunong kang mag-reflect, marunong kang mag-improve ng sarili mo in action habang ginagawa mo on action okay pagkatapos mong uh, ma-experience yung gawain yon now related to this is the concept of lifelong learning kasi ang teacher okay all right the concept of lifelong learning uh, and lifelong learning is a concept that tells us that we are responsible. You will assume, okay, we should assume personal responsibility. Okay, we will assume personal responsibility for your own learning. And that makes you a lifelong learner. Ikaw mismo ang mag assume ng responsibility for your own learning. And this supports John Dewey's you know, favorite, famous quotation that education is life. Okay, hindi totoo na education for life. It is education is life. Now, now a teacher who is a reflective learner knows how to learn. Alright? Remember, it's, you know, learning to 
know, learning to be, learning to do, learning to live together, and learning to change. But this one is learning to learn. Okay, everything begins with that favorite quote, I mean, derived from the favorite quote, experience is the best teacher. Okay, let's agree. Let's agree meantime. Let's all agree that experience is, a, is the best teacher. Fine with me. But you know what? I don't quite agree because there are other better teachers than experience alone. But let me put it in this context. So you experience it. But sometimes we experience it and it ends there. That's not good. There should be some amount of reflection. You experience, then you reflect from that experience. You know, this is what I do every night. I go back to the day. I reflect what happened to me during the day. Okay, and what happened to me that how would I improve it in case it happens again? All right, and after that, then you make, you theorize. You theorize. How is that? You make a conclusion. For example, I said, I did, I experienced creating this video today. Tonight, I will reflect and ask myself, if I will do the video again, how would I do it better? And therefore, I watch myself as this video is posted. I reflect upon it. Then I theorize. I'll probably say, hmm, maybe in the future, I should tagalize some part. Or maybe in the future, I should, you know, expound some more in some areas. All right. And that, therefore, I theorize. Then, therefore, after I theorize, I will do it. I'll do something else. But I will try to experiment. I want to try something new. I will try to, uh, to deliver my lecture in more Tagalog ways than English so that it could be understood more by others. Or maybe I should do, start with English but summarize in the end in Filipino. Okay, and I will experiment. And that experimentation creates the new experience. So it goes in cycle. It goes round and round and, and make me, uh, you know, make me grow from one experience to reflection, to theorizing, to experimenting, and then I improve upon it. But wh how, why is this not happening? Because we lack the four skills to be reflective. One of them is what you call the valuing skills. Valuing skills. Okay, we don't give much values of the experience. That's why we don't reflect upon it. Why? Because we ignore it. We ignore the value of the experience. That's why we don't even reflect about it. You know, once you reflect, you develop the thinking skills. You know, you become a reflecting thinker, okay? And sometimes you don't grow from the experience because you don't think about it anymore. Then after you think about it and you develop some conclusion, there should, therefore, there should be some decision skills. And not many of us would know how to make decisions, okay? The decisions to change, the decision to improve something. And finally, what we actually lack to improve is the acting skills. We don't know how to act it out. We lack the skills to act it out. All right, imagine if a teacher, every time she would go home on her way walking back home from school, what if the teacher is engaging in reflection on action? You know, while the teacher is teaching, the teaching should be reflecting in action. Then on her way home, she is doing reflection on action and she will reflect upon the experience of that day, valuing it and thinking about it and making a conclusion, thinking of some students who were missed out, some students who were reprimanded, some students who were not giving attention. Then the teacher will make a decision to experiment on something. The next day, act on it and create a new experience. That teacher will grow from, be from becoming a beginning teacher to a distinguished teacher. So that's the connection, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if you're talking about lifelong learning and personal development, don't miss that the teacher is committed to uphold the dignity, the dignity of becoming a teacher. Dignity, okay. All right. Uphold the dignity of teaching, of becoming a teacher. And this is where, um, you know, key words emerge in the development of all of these. The first of them is what you call the caring behavior. Okay, the caring behavior. All right, we want teachers who are more caring. Okay, teachers who know respect. Okay, 
All right. And finally, okay. And finally, finally, teachers, teachers who would have the integrity. All right. Now, and this is part of what you will develop personally and professionally. Caring behavior has something to do with empathy. Do you feel what the students feel? And as you feel the feeling, you remain objective. You know, can you feel what the te your co-teacher feels? Can you put yourself in the shoes of a mother of this child? That's empathy. It's when you feel what the person feels but retains objectivity. Because if you are subjective, you are not empathetic. You are sympathetic. Okay, that's the difference. You have to be objective to be empathetic. And of course, this is where compassion comes in. Compassion. So, you know, you may want to impose the rules, but do you have the compassion that this child in front of you did not eat breakfast? You know, do you have the compassion to have uh, an extended 30 minutes with the child because you know that this child, uh, the child's parents fought this morning and got separated this morning? Things like that. You know, as teachers, you should be more than just a content provider. But you know, you are in loco parentis, the parents of the child in the class, in the school, in loco parentis. Now, with respect means tolerance. This is a magic word in teaching. You know, tolerance is when you don't necessarily agree or you don't necessarily align with it, but you seek to understand and you allow that diversity. For example, religion. Okay, for example, religion. Yes, you're Christian and you have a Muslim student. It doesn't mean that if you respect, that it doesn't mean you will also worship Allah. No. Tolerance tells you that, okay, I am Catholic, I am Christian, you are a Muslim, I respect what you believe in, and I am not changing necessarily what I believe in only because I respect you. That's tolerance. And there is beauty there, diversity. You know, when something is not aligned with what you believe in, it doesn't mean that what you don't believe in is wrong because you are both probably correct. Okay, and lastly, with integrity, don't miss honesty. Teachers should teach and demonstrate honesty because honesty is what leads to trustworthiness. Okay, trustworthiness, the teacher who can be trusted. And you know, all of these, the caring behavior, the respect, the integrity, these are the, these are the basis or these are the foundation of the dignity or, or the, the dignity of the teaching profession. Okay? So that, that's, that's very, very important. And all of these will be anchored on philosophy. That's why there's philosophy of education. And such philosophy will teach us not only understanding, okay? Not only view, okay? But even conceptualization. All right, philosophy goes like this. It's all about perspective. You know, if somebody's looking at me from this direction, and that person says, oh, I can see your face. And somebody's behind me can see my hair and say, no, I don't see a face. I see hair. I see the back. And on this side would, would, would say, a person on this side would say, I can see your right side. And the person see, in this side would say, no, 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 I don't see the right side. I see the left side. Do you know that even if they're looking at different perspectives, they're actually correct. They're all looking at me. That's philosophy. And because of this, you know, a teacher wants to grow not only by herself, but she wants to grow in collaboration with others. That's why she links with colleagues. Okay? And that's why you should be part of an organization. You know, you should be part of your alumni because that's part of the personal growth and professional development. So I will summarize this side. And sabi natin, ang personal growth at professional development has something to do with the teacher's ability to have personal and professional reflection. Ang sabi natin, pag sinabing reflection in, learn, in, in action, 
habang nangyayari yung action. Pag sinabi natin reflection on action, pagkatapos mangyari yung sitwasyon. Ang purpose ng reflection ay para mag-improve. At tinuro ko sa inyo, by the way, this is by Kolb. Okay? This is Kolb's, uh, um, what do you call this, uh, adult learning model. Sabi natin, nag-uumpisa ang lahat sa experience, tapos i-reflect mo yung experience, tapos mag-theorize ka ng experience, tapos you should be ready to create a new experience and experiment to create a new experience. Pero sabi natin, kaya hindi nangyayari ito kasi minsan wala tayong valuing skills. Hindi natin napapahalagahan yung experience. Ayaw natin mag-isip, hindi tayo sanay mag-isip. Thinking skills. O kaya nag-isip tayo, hindi naman tayo nag decision O nag decision tayo, hindi naman natin nagawa. Pero kung kaya natin gawin itong apat na to, we will grow as professionals. Kasi sabi nga natin, gusto natin umangat sa pagiging beginning teacher na may kakayanan, mayroong kwalifikasyon, pero kailangan pa ng mara- suporta ng marami. Samantalang kung proficient ka na over time, you can be on your own, you know, you can be, uh, you, you, you have capability na to, you know, to execute educational program. Pero siyempre, gusto mo mas malalim pa doon. Gusto mo magkaroon ng in-depth, sophisticated knowledge about it. You want to be collaborative. You want to mentor others. That's why these people go to hear it. Okay? They, me- they mentor. And of course, this is what we want. We want to be the distinguished teacher talking about global, talking about excellence, quality, you know, walking the talk of uh, continuing improvement, walking the talk of professional enrichment, and you know, uh, celebrating the impact that you create in the lives of others, not only of your students, but of people around you. At sabi natin, syempre kung ikaw ay totoong uh, professionally and uh, personally reflective, then you will assume the personal responsibility for your learning. Okay? And uh, that's why education is life. Ang may sabi nito ay si John Dewey. Alright? Kaya, yun ang definition ng lifelong learning. Walang pwedeng magsabi sa'yo kung paano ka matututo kasi ikaw na mismo ang nag-aasum na kailangan mong matuto. Hindi ka mag-graduate studies kasi gusto mong mapromote. Mag-graduate studies ka kasi gusto mong maging mas magaling na guro. Hindi ka mag-graduate studies kasi gusto mong maging principal or maging superintendent. Gusto mong mag-graduate studies kasi gusto mong mag-research. Okay? Gusto mong mag-improve ang iyong practice at gusto mong maging lifelong learner. At tatandaan nyo, hindi lang lahat ng learning ay formal, hindi lang lahat ng learning ay kailangan sa school. Pwedeng non-formal, through seminars, webinars, you know, self-directed learning, etc. Pero ding informal, yung mga natutunan mo sa buhay. Kaya lang, kung gusto mo siyang maging qualification, kailangan humanap ka ng recognition, validation, and accreditation ng learning na yon na pinag-usapan natin. At syempre, kailangan palalimin natin ang ating filosofiya bilang mga teachers, not only to gain understanding, not only to, to see the views, but also to be able to enrich our conceptualization. And finally, bilang mga teachers who are growing uh, personally and developing professionally, kailangan ma-uphold natin ang dignity of the teaching profession and the dignity of teachers. Paano yon? Through our caring behavior. Ikaw ba'y empathetic? Can you put yourself in the shoes of another? Yun yung mga issues dito. Can you feel what others feel? Do you have the compassion? Can you do acts of kindness? And of course, respeto. Marunong ka ba mag-tolerate? The key word here is tolerance. Halimbawa, gender. It doesn't mean you have to be gay to respect LGBT rights. It doesn't follow. Okay, you can respect and un- understand and respect the LGBT rights and the LGBT choices even if you're not part of it. And that's what you call tolerance. And the perfect example of that is the religion. You don't have to be Muslim to appreciate the beauty of Islam. Okay? And, and to apply some principles of Islam in your lives. And that's celebrating the beauty of diversity. And lastly, integrity is when you, you're honest and that's when you are trustworthy. You know, trust is not something you solicit. It's something that's given to you. And that's because you are integral, you're whole. That means you, you are a great person inside and out. So this may have taken you so long. But you know, CPD or personal growth and development is not because you're renewing the license. It's because it is your responsibility to improve. You know why? Because the world is changing. And why won't you? You know, and always remember this. The teacher cannot pour from an empty cup. Teachers can only give what they have. 
If you don't have it, you cannot give it. And it will be unfair to your students who you are forcing to learn if you yourself has stagnated in your learning. Thank you very much. And this completes the seven domains of the PPST. In case you have not watched the six other PPST videos that I have right here, you might be missing a major element on how to become not only a good teacher, but a great one. That's the intention of this channel. So please subscribe to this channel, click the notification bell so that you can get updates whenever we post something, not only in teaching, not only as, as teachers, but also as, as persons, because soon this channel will provide all those. But for the meantime, congratulations for becoming a person who will choose to develop professionally and grow personally. Thank you. Keep safe.